Excellent. All right, welcome everybody to the Navigating Philanthropic Art Options for Artists workshop. Uh, thank you for registering for the workshop. Thank you for taking time out of your afternoon. Um, we are really excited to have this workshop and have someone so prestigious such as Janice Bond hosting this workshop, sharing her knowledge, sharing her wisdom. Um, and we're just overall excited. Now, um, feel free to leave comments and questions. There is a separate Q&A box. So if you have a question specifically, please um, put your question in there. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and then restart sharing my screen. Um, all right. And then without the further ado, Janice, take it away. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to uh, be here um, sharing with you all a bit about um, philanthropic art auctions and you know, before we get into all of the nitty gritty details, I want to just talk a little bit about why I thought this was important. Uh, so often, you know, artists are asked to participate in philanthropic art auctions um, pretty much every year, you know, not just domestically, um, internationally, not just in Houston, um, but all over the country. And whereas there is so much great opportunity and there's so much opportunity to both help the organization, its programs, and also the artists and the work that they intend to do or the relationship that they intend to build. What I've noticed over time is that how these things can truly be mutually beneficial, especially for artists who are in the developing stage of their careers, it could be a bit opaque. You know, it's not as clear. And so this is simply an opportunity for us to have a bit of a conversation. And I want to start by encouraging you all to use the chat function. Um, no need to wait um, until you know the end of the presentation to ask questions. Um, as we see them or as they're filtered in, I'll try to weave them into the conversation. Um, but then of course, you know, if you want to wait till the end, that's up to you as well. So what we'll do, why don't we start with the overview? I just want to give a quick recap um, of what we'll be discussing today. So first I wanna start with a disclaimer. I do not work with an auction house. Um, I don't represent one specifically. I'm also not a tax professional um, or finance professional. I am a gallerist, a curator, um, and an arts administrator. I'm an artist. Um, so these are uh, both notes that I've learned from other professionals, but also in my experience as a person who has curated art auctions and even participated in one or two myself. So we'll be discussing common types of art auctions, considerations for participation, questions for organizations. Um, we'll talk a little bit about this year's Wonderball art auction. We'll do a little case study there. Uh, leveraging your artistic brand, best practices, and then also tax considerations and artwork rejection protocols. Um, so why don't we start with uh, what is a philanthropic art auction? So a philanthropic art auction, uh, simply put, is essentially an auction that utilizes artwork to generate income for, it could be a nonprofit organization, a museum, whatever have you. It's just simply a way that art is being utilized, or art-based work is being utilized to generate revenue um, um, to build or support the budgets of these uh, philanthropic organizations. Why don't we go to a couple of, you know, how do these auctions work? So essentially, uh, they, it depends on the style of auction, which we'll get into in a moment, but you have either online, silent, live, and it just depends. It depends. For the silent auction, bids are placed privately um, on bid sheets. I know that many of you have seen this where you know, either there is a clipboard or something on the wall. And uh, even right now, you'll have, sometimes people have big cards and you're able to place them in little, uh, not buckets, but like some sort of repository receptacle. 
And essentially at the end of the night, the highest bid wins the artwork. I've always found those to be really interesting because, you know, right at that last 30 minutes to an hour, people kind of huddling around the clipboard uh, can be a little intense, but you know, what can I say? Online, um, that's usually over the internet. And the thing about online auctions is that they can also happen in person. Um, although people, and these are are pretty common. So you know, even with like Wonderball um, and many other uh, nonprofit or philanthropic art auctions, what they'll do is that they'll have uh, both the opportunity for you to bid on your phone or on your computer, you know, et cetera. And even if you do get a paddle for the live, a lot of people just like, you know, both participate in a silent auction and then the live. And then of course, you know, remotely, whoever wins, once the clock winds down, um, whatever time zone it's set to, um, once it hits zero, whoever has the highest bid that's pre-registered, they win the work. And then live conducted in real time. This is the one that I think that a lot of people are most familiar with. You know, when you're thinking about auctions in general, you know, it's it's uh, uh, usually at the auction house or gallery. But of course, if you're talking about philanthropic art auction, it could be at the gala, at a hotel, it doesn't really matter. But essentially the bids are pretty open. Um, the auctioneer calls it out and whoever has the highest price uh, or bid, uh, rather at the end, they're the one who takes home the work. Next slide, please. So let's talk about like, why would you participate as an artist? I think that that's a really, hmm, I don't want to say subjective, but it is really important that you decide if that's something for you. Um, I think that it's important to understand that whereas we're going to talk through a couple of benefits and possibilities, I would say that one of the most immediate for myself was really just being able to get to see other work and uh, being able to support an organization that I believe in uh, and being able to donate in some way. Um, but then also being able to uh, leverage, you know, the brand or the the space of the organization and have more visibility within a certain network of, um, for some of you all, be in the interest of being visible to collectors. And collectors often, depending on the organization, uh, find themselves at these auctions. In fact, a lot of collectors target our auctions um, because they know that there may be uh, fresh work, obscure work, um, or just work that wouldn't be readily available, you know, through a gallery show, a museum show um, that they may be able to acquire. So I think that there's a number of different ways, but I think that the most important thing is to center whatever that reason is within the goals of your artistic practice uh, commercially. So there's your studio practice, and we won't spend a lot of time on this. There's your studio practice in, in the space in which you make your work, the reasons in which you make. And then there's some overlap with that in your commercial goals. Not everyone's commercial goals are to, um, you know, have sell out commercial gallery shows. You know, some artists want to just have their message and their work be visible. And then from time to time, sell work, make it available, be added to specific collections or institutions. There is no right or wrong. And so again, your why is really connected to your why as an artist overall. And I think it's imperative that when you're being asked that you consider all of those whys before moving forward. But let's talk about some myths for a second. So one of the things that I think is important on both sides is to really talk about some possibilities of a potential misalignment or miscommunication around what auctions are, do, you know, et cetera. So let's start with number one, and we'll stay on this slide for a few minutes. Uh, one is that donating the work, and this is for both for artists and any philanthropic groups that are on the line, is like, one, that donating the work doesn't cost the artist anything. And if you are an artist on this line, I'm pretty sure you understand that that's quite to the con contrary. So even if your materials are, are outsourced or um, given to you, you know, studio space, et cetera. But when you think about like labor, fuel, et cetera, framing, all of those different things where it applies, there is still a 
baseline cost to participating in any auction. Uh, two is that artists don't mind just giving away inventory for a good cause. Now, of course, this is a broad stroke. None of these things that I'm saying apply to everyone. But generally speaking, I would imagine that as an artist, you're not necessarily super excited to give away um, unsold inventory. You know, I, I'm pretty certain uh, for most artists, it's great to uh, have your work acquired, to be compensated for your work. Um, another myth is that uh, auctions are uh, the same as an exhibition opportunity. That is not so. You know, exhibitions are exhibitions, auctions are auctions. You know, uh, when you're talking about an exhibition, especially if it's an exhibition that was put together um, by a curator or um, an advisor, uh, very similar, but not exactly the same roles. You know, there's a narrative, there's a through line, there's a more direct association. And so unless this auction that you're a part of is curated as an exhibition that happens to also be an auction, then it is not the same thing. And people aren't necessarily looking at it exactly the same way. They may be drawn to the work, but it's not within the context of how you would experience a general exhibition. And I think that that's really important um, as artists, as you all are continuing to seek and align with exhibition and auction-based opportunities. Let's see, I would say another would be that artists benefit from art organizations and therefore it's the duty and responsibility of artists to show their support by donating work, right? And I think that that way of thinking, you know, of course, again, there, I may be preaching to the choir, as they say, with artists on the line here, but I think it's important to say it out loud um, that yes, even so, if artists, you know, are benefiting from a specific organization, it doesn't necessarily mean that the artist is obligated um, or being dutiful by donating. It is still grace, it's still giving, it's still a way of actively extending and participating uh, in the sustainability or the expansion of the organization. Our organizations deserve support and often are challenged to raise funds. However, it's important to remember that it's not required um, or balanced for there to be an over-reliance of auctions um, based on donated artwork. And so if you find yourself uh, being an artist that is consistently asked to be placed into auctions, um, then it's time to really start giving uh, some more discretionary thought and considerations as to why you're participating and also what are the outputs um, and impact of the organizations that you're providing work uh, to and for. So why don't we go into the next slide. Let's go into some questions. I think that when we're thinking about questions for an organization, uh, these are some that I think of, but you know, of course there may be more um, that you think about. One is like the purpose and beneficiaries. So I always wanna know what is the purpose of the auction? Uh, what organization or cause benefit from the proceeds? I would love to know that if I'm participating in an art auction, is it going to general operating expenses, you know, staff salaries, et cetera? Is it going to support a specific program? You know, and that's just for my own, my own understanding. And that may not be important to you, but it is a question that you have um, the right and ability to ask. Uh, commission and compensation. Every art auction is not a given that you're expected to donate your work at 100%. You know, there are a number of different auctions that will uh, allow for a donation, uh, a hammer price, and we'll get to that, a hammer price of up to, you know, 30, 40%, which is a great percentage to come back to the artist, um, you know, and considering that you're still supporting the organization for you to be able to have some take home as well, if that's something that you desire. 
you can, of course, opt to donate 100% of the auction or hammer price if you so choose to do so. But understand that the, that question is something that you can ask. I would say that the auction structure, you know, what type of auction is it going to be? Silent, online, live, um, how will it be displayed? Um, what's expected as far as the format? I think that that's important, especially if you're an artist that has collectors or uh, even if you're less seasoned and you're just starting to have core interest in your work, this is a great opportunity to be able to, especially if it's going to be online or if it's in a city where you live or you have uh, reach or collectors there. I would encourage people who are collecting your work to attend these auctions, to participate in the auction. Uh, I think that it's a great way for them to both, when you're talking about them, them being collectors or other individuals to both get familiar with your work, but then also have the opportunity to collect it um, and get familiar with the institution that you're supporting. Uh, I would say target audience. It's not as important for some artists, but for me, I think it's great because I think that it allows you to select work that's appropriate for the environment. So, you know, say for example, you're an artist and it's going to be uh, for the general museum demographic, you know, whatever that is, adults, et cetera. You know, but what if this is a special auction that's really focused towards children or uh, they would prefer small works, like, you know, different things like that. Like, don't uh, feel like you can't ask those detailed questions and that really the best thing is just to give, you know, whatever it is that that you want. Uh, promotion and marketing, of course, getting an understanding of how they intend to promote the show, you know, depending, I mean, promote the auction. Um, will it be graphics? Will it be video? You know, it'd be great if you had the opportunity to receive some professional images of the work, you know, in the auction, even if it's one or two. I mean, that's great for your portfolio. It's, it's great for your own marketing. Um, especially if the imagery can be available prior to the auction itself. Again, giving you the opportunity to share um, this image and if it's an online uh, auction, being able to share that link um, with anyone in your network that you think would be interested. Contract and agreement, understanding your terms. Understanding your terms are really important. Don't just drop off a piece of artwork somewhere and say, okay, now I'm participating in your auction. I have you covered. And most institutions won't let you do that anyway. You know, you need to have a clear understanding of what the expectations are, what your give and what your get is, um, even if it's a full donation where even after the auction, say your work doesn't sell, that you still intend for them to keep the work. If that's the case, then that should be spelled out in your agreement. Everything should be outlined. It's just best for everyone to keep everything clean and understood, even the way that the work would be displayed. Is it going to be on an easel? Is it going to be hung? All of these things you have the right to know. And in earnest, you know, when you're talking about your professional career as artists, remember that presentation is truly important. And so you should know how your work wherever it's going to be displayed, whether it's in a museum, a gallery, um, a, a lobby or an auction, a gala auction, that you know exactly how your work is going to be displayed and that is to your, your satisfaction or at least in alignment um, with, with the median of how everything is going to be displayed. I would say tax implications, understanding the benefits and liabilities, uh, and getting a sense of like any feedback and reporting, you know, especially if you are, when I say hammer price, what I mean is, you know, for live auctions, uh, when they have like the bids, and they go up to a certain amount, like being able to understand that there's your fair market price and then the hammer price. So if it goes past the amount that you were anticipating, the work may go for, um, say an additional thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. Are you going to receive whatever percentage of the fair market value of the work? Or are you going to receive the percentage on the additional 
uh, revenue that will come post the fair market value due to the hammer price. That's something that you want to know. And just so you know, like take notes, but I will provide some of these details um, in a PDF that Fresh Arts will be able to share with all registrants of this particular uh, workshop as well. So why don't we go into the next one, the next thing. Let's see, case study, Wonderball. It was so much fun. Um, this was a lot of fun. One of the things that I thought about this year a lot was how can we really look at this particular auction as an opportunity to share our world-class homegrown artists in a way that they may not have been seen before or in a combination that they haven't been seen before intergenerationally. So we had artists, we had photographers, collages, uh, painters, uh, so forth and so on, we had archivists. Uh, we had artists that were currently participating in a biennial and people who managed different other types of arts administration projects around the city that people may not be as familiar with their work. I wanted to show it all, but I also wanted to be cohesive. And so even with this small image, and we had such a great time, you can see a variety of the works that were there, different sizes, et cetera. But I will say admittedly uh, for the auction, I did think more in the way of um, not necessarily small works only, but certainly on the smaller side. Remember, and, and, and this is a conversation that you could have with any curator or whoever is requesting the work for the auction, um, do they have a maximum size recommendation? And usually if they've had this auction more than once or they've led an auction more than once, because you may be dealing with someone that's outside of the auction. I was the auction manager for the 2022 Photo Fest Biennial. And so, whereas I wasn't an employee of Photo Fest, I was also uh, managing that particular auction. And so, whereas there were no size uh, requirements there, you know, when I think about the Wonder Ball, it was really an opportunity for us to showcase a number of works, but only look at it in a way to where if someone was possibly a seasoned collector, but also people who may not have as much space in their home, something they will be willing to quickly uh, commit to and or take home possibly even that day. And that was really exciting. So we even had, we had work from Kobe Deal and, you know, Donkey Boy and Hema Marie and, and Mark Fury and, and several, several others. And I was really uh, pleased to see how um, how the work was accepted and received, but also it was beautiful to create space for artists themselves to engage and get to see each other and know each other uh, and congregate. And, and for some of them who had either ne never met or not seen each other in a while. And as another point to that, as far as questions, I think you should always ask, if you're being asked to participate in the auction, if they don't make it already available, then you should certainly ask if you can have a ticket um, to the gala or whatever auction that you are participating in. Because whereas the revenue is one benefit and visibility and all those good things for an art auction, it is always a great opportunity for you to be in the room. You know, and always remember that as an entrepreneurial artist, being in the room with your work doesn't mean you need to stand beside it, you know, at like a tour guide, but essentially you truly do need to think about it as an opportunity for you to, again, see other work, get to meet people and build that muscle around being in these spaces where the commerce of art is happening. Let's see, uh, we have a question from the audience, so we'll pause there and uh, address this. How do you find art auctions to get into and how do you approach them? So I would say that if you're talking about the Houston-based market, one of the things that I've noticed is that usually the organizations 
are asking the artists and not necessarily always the other way around. But that doesn't mean that there hasn't been many a time over the years and several that I've even experienced where an artist has reached out and said, hey, for next year's art auction, I'd be happy to donate a piece to your organization. And if that is something that you're interested in doing, then I would recommend reaching out to the organization directly. There are different people in different departments for each organization. And as I mentioned earlier, that organization may even outsource their auction. If they've done auctions before, look into the history. Google is our friend. Look into their history and see who managed the auction. If it was something that was done in-house or if it's not completely clear, then just reach out to their general administration. Um, they may have a curatorial team that is managed. They may have a education or the development department. The development department always knows who managed the auction. Why? Because it's directly connected to their giving and fundraising strategy. So if you cannot readily find that information, the development department will always know who was managing the auction for that organization. And from there, I believe that you could have a very um, professional and uh, direct yet organic conversation um, with whomever it is um, to make that happen. And it's not guaranteed, of course, but at least you'll know uh, where to start the conversation. And how do you approach them? Um, besides email or a phone call, um, I would say be sure to already have a few things ready to go. If you're looking to solicit or submit to an organization, one is, of course, if you have a website or social media, making sure that all of your content is up to date. Now, that is not synonymous with making sure that every photo that you have of all of your work is online, but it is important that your links work, that your website is, if you have one, is reflective of the, the, the work that you're doing. Um, that your email address is routing to the right location and that you're responsive, that your social media, if you do provide it, uh, does align with whatever it is that you're offering to them, that it does, if, it, if you are giving your social media account information, that your social media account does actually have um, artwork on it. And I would say that when I think about CVs, CVs, yes, they're important. Uh, for some auctions, they're more important than others. But this is just a conversation on how to be a more prepared artist. So when it comes to a approach, those are what immediately come to mind. And why don't we go to the next slide? All right. So why don't we talk a little bit about how you're able to, you know, leverage your brand a little bit. So we already talked about, and this is, and this may be something that you are or are not um, interested in. Again, this goes for every artist. You decide why your why will determine how important leveraging your brand, your brand is in a philanthropic giving situation. Okay. But no matter what, just understanding that when in alignment, doing good is good business, you know? So just want to make sure that, you know, make a little note of that. So one, uh, of course, is exposure. Uh, let's say, let's substitute exposure for visibility. I prefer that word. Uh, I think that by contributing to an auction, you know, you're able to showcase your work to a wider audience. Uh, many people attend auctions that don't necessarily get to engage the gallery or museum circuit. Um, or, and if you don't have a studio where you're doing regular studio visits, again, that's another another thing where you know people just may not be seeing your work as much. Uh, so of course, potential collectors, artists, enthusiasts, uh, just visibility, uh, networking. Again, you know, auctions bring together a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life. You have people that are participating in auctions that are purchasing for themselves or they're getting work for a uh, a corporate collection or for a library or 
or a museum. You never know. A gift for a friend or a family collection. I've seen so many different reasons why someone bids on the work. And sometimes, you I've seen this a couple of times too, which is really beautiful, where sometimes a collector is just inspired by the artists themselves and they decide that they want to support the work and see the work be lifted up in a way um, to where it could be more visible. Building relationships, um, supporting a cause, you could build a strong relationship with a nonprofit uh, museum or other nonprofit organization that you care about uh, could lead to future opportunities or collaborations. A uh, brand association, you know, if you truly believe in the organization or if it's a highly visible brand, then having your work as part of their auction is a good look, you know, honestly, especially if it's a reputable organization that people trust, uh, whether it's in your industry or outside of your industry. It's, it's great to know that brand association, it demonstrates social responsibility, community engagement, collaboration. It says a lot about you, right? As an artist. And this is really great also for our introverted, uh, especially our introverted artists, you know, artists that don't really like to spend a lot of time talking um, or may not be, you know, as uh, politically driven online, uh, so forth and so on, but you may find that, you know, you want to use your artwork to support things that you believe in. You know, this is a great way to continue to do those types of things, creating future opportunities, uh, getting feedback, uh, different areas of validation, you know, so having your work at an auction is a bit different than having a studio visit. Of course, you're taking your work within one environment and placing it into another and you being able to have that feedback, that direct feedback uh, from someone on site, whether it's an artist, curator or uh, a collector, whether they bid on your work or not is absolutely valuable. Remember that critique, you know, you can pick it up, put it down, whatever you decide. But I love critique. I love critique wherever it comes because it's up to you to decide. It's just information. And so this allows space for information, you know, especially if it's an on site auction. And then social media promotion, uh, and then also contributing to the community. I think that the social media promotion, this goes back to those questions about marketing. It's like, hey, are they going to do an individual graphic with your image? Are they going to put you in the press release? Will you be on their website? Is it going to be listed somewhere um, into perpetuity? Uh, are they going to take photos of the artists that are involved in the auction? You know, all of those things are extremely important. So if you are going to be involved in an art auction, it's extremely important that you know how they how they're going to market your work, um, market your name, and being prepared. You know, ask when you're saying when we're talking about social media pro, uh, promotion. I think it's really important. They may know. They may have already have a schedule. When are you all going to submit the press release? When is the Instagram post going to go live? Um, are you all sending out an email for this day? You want to make sure that you're on their email list. Because if you do, then you'll be able to continue and support the momentum of that auction and also gain more visibility online. And then again, as I mentioned, contribution to the community. You know, by participating in this auction or these auctions, you can support a cause you believe in and contribute positively um, to the community. And really, it strengthens your brand. It's showing that you're socially responsible and engaged. Or at least, again, that you have an association with a brand um, or an organization that is respected and that you also align with their ethos and or programming. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, let's go into best practices. All right, I think this is really important because the best practices they are not just for our auctions. I think that these best practices could align with 
anytime you're interacting with a professional related to your work and just pick and choose, right? Wherever it works, all right? So let's start with high quality photography. Clear, high resolution. You know what, let's go back for a second. Just remember how you do anything is how you do everything when it comes to your art practice. If you are committed to high quality work, if you're committed to clarity, if you're committed to timeliness, if you are committed to professionalism, it will show up not only in your exhibition practices, but it will show up in your philanthropic giving, which of course is part of your participation in these art auctions. It matters. So let's say high quality photography. You could take high quality photos. If you have a good friend um, who's a photographer or you're one yourself, um, make sure that you always get photos of everything. Um, don't rely on the organization or the nonprofit to provide you with installation or professional images of the work. It's highly probable, but it's not for you to rely on, right? So one, high quality photography, clear high resolution images that accurately represent colors, textures, and details. If you have the ability to get photos that have multiple angles, uh, different things like that, that's great too. And also I would say, let's start with a shared folder. If you have a Google folders, Dropbox, or any other cloud-based or shared folder, if that organization allows for that type of sharing, ask them, of course. Um, but that is also quite helpful as opposed to sending like four or five emails, right? Um, no one likes that. Uh, so professional framing and mounting. Making sure the work is in a presented in a professional manner. Now, it does not matter if this work has been like in storage, in stock. It may not always be new work that you're providing to an auction, but you have that work show up as if it is a brand new showpiece out of your studio or if you have a gallery out of your gallery. The frame should be clean. Um, everything should be wrapped properly. It should become ready to hang um, unless the organization has specified otherwise. You want to always, and in every case, as an artist, present your work to the best of its ability. Now, that doesn't mean that you immediately default to a $1,000 you know, framing job. That is not what I'm saying. And going back to the questions, right? A question that you can often ask if you're participating in an auction and you do require framing, ask them if they offer framing. That may be an option. Don't make the assumption as an artist that all of that burden, and I would say burden is a burden if the resources aren't readily available, right? Never assume that these expenses for these auctions are just on you. You should ask if, if framing is available, if you need it. You should ask if they're available or someone from their organization is available to pick up the work uh, from your studio or gallery location. Um, all those things are questions that you can continue to ask. But going back to it, detailed descriptions. Make sure that you provide the title, the medium, the size, the creation date. Uh, if you have a very interesting story uh, behind it, especially if it's going into a live auction, that's really helpful. Anything that can enhance the artwork's appeal and add value. Remember, think about those things. A great thing, especially if you're talking about a live auction, if you look at some of the best live auctions, some of them are just the storytelling uh, is, is really important. You know, getting an understanding of what the work is all about uh, sometimes is quite engaging and really engages collectors and encourages them um, to bid. Your artist biography and statement, uh, they may or may not ask for this, but you know, always have it at the ready. Pricing guidance. If you do not know um, your fair market value of your work, then it's important for you to engage you know, a professional or a colleague, especially if you're in a major market I'm pretty sure that at least through one degree of separation, especially if you're connected to fresh arts, 
um, that there is someone that they can refer you to to give you some idea of what you should be pricing your work as. What I will say is this, be consistent, okay? No putting work in an auction and saying that it's worth 25000 and you're selling your work for uh, the fair market value of the work is 25000 and you're selling that same work for 10000 elsewhere. That's really important. So let's think about also documentation. If you have a certificate of authenticity, um, if you have any uh, exhibition history for the work, make sure that you provide that as well. I think in general that if you're providing your artwork <clears throat> to anyone, if anyone is paying for your work for any reason, whether it's an auction or a general sale, then they should receive a certificate of authenticity. But that goes into the conversation of how you're managing your administration for your art career. And that's a different conversation, but I would say that in this case, it's recommended. Proper packaging and handling, like I said, making sure that it's properly packaged, especially if it's fragile, uh, if there's particular instructions for handling, uh, for unwrapping, all those things, if it's extremely intricate, then you may choose to be on site. All of that needs to be talked about um, with said organization or curator. Timing and deadlines, submit your items in advance. Make sure that you especially get your information in in time so that they can promote your work and um, some auction houses or organizations produce booklets, right? You wanna make sure that your work is in there. You wanna communicate openly about the submission process, terms, expectations, whatever it is that you need to have the most like successful outcome. You wanna make sure that that's, you all have had that conversation and you wanna promote the auction. You wanna make sure that you are really pressing things forward, okay? So why don't we go to the next slide? Taxes. So I'm going to skip through this relatively quickly because I just want to remind you all that I am not a tax professional. It's important that the tax laws vary by state, jurisdiction. So you really should seek personalized advice um, based on your specific situation or location. Um, but I just wanted to make note of a couple of things. When you donate artwork to a philanthropic auction, um, you may be eligible, eligible for a tax donate deduction. However, the deduction is usually limited to the cost of materials to create the piece, um, unless there's different scenarios, again, where you can get up to a certain amount of the fair market value, okay? Keep all of your records of donations, including the title of the work, the date of the donation, the organization receiving the donation, and the cost of materials, this will be important. Understand your fair market value, income tax consideration. If the auction house shares a portion of the proceeds from the sale with the artist, this income may be taxable. You have to report that, or you should report that income received and be aware of your tax liabilities. Um, you're also thinking about like capital gains. Um, if the artwork was previously sold and then donated by a collector, then capital gains tax may apply. That's something that you should talk about with tax professionals. Sales tax, but then ultimately you really should um, contact a tax professional. But understand that whether you are getting a deduction or not, it's important whenever you're doing anything with an asset, especially your own artwork, be clear about what it is that how it may impact you financially, especially when it comes to, you know, taxes. All right, next slide. All right, lastly, if you're rejected, um, if your work is rejected, really keep it simple. I mean, you know, the thing is, is that I think about rejection in general as just a great space of learning. It's all just information. Okay, uh, there it may not be an alignment for that year, 
they may already have work that's similar. Um, they may not be looking for your type of work. There could be a number of different reasons. So I would say if they're open to it, ask for feedback. Definitely don't take it personally. Uh, learn from the experience in the sense of if they say, hey, you know, this particular work was rejected. We like your work, but could you please send something else? It could be because of the way the work was presented or framed, or um, it could be the size. It could be any number of things. Stay professional. What does that mean? It means a number of different things. It means uh, being gracious, keeping the conversation respectful. Uh, if you decide that you do not want to submit in the future, that's completely up to you. Um, but overall, again, just taking this rejection, if you will, as just information that for whatever reason, which you may or may not know, there just wasn't an alignment. Continue to network with the organ organizers. If someone is a curator or a development professional um, or an auction house or an auctioneer, they most likely are working on more than one auction a year and or may know other people who are curating exhibitions and different things like that. So this is not the, the end of anything. Uh, then I would say looking at uh, focusing on your craft and artistic brand, looking at alternative venues, and then staying positive and persistent. Uh, again, if you are rejected for an art auction, the level of which is not the end of the world um, is, is I, I couldn't say it more. Uh, just take it as information, just as if any rejection, any rejection letter, et cetera, and just think of it as a starting point to get, evaluate your work uh, further and your alignments. And again, yes, to reinforce for anything related to taxes, finance, et cetera, please contact a tax professional. And there is a link in the chat um, if you do not know where to start. So with that, I think that we land pretty much in something that I think is really important. You just keep doing the work. It's imperative that you do that, um, that you keep your practice going. And no matter what's happening, that you keep focusing on aligning your work with the best, not just organizations, but institutions, artists, groups, uh, education. You just do the best to continue to be the fullest expression of your creative self. And when you're making an offering to the community or to an organization through a philanthropic auction, just making sure, make sure that you, as well as that particular organization um, are in a good place and being able to move forward, even if it's some other time. So um, with that, I wanna say thank you for your time. The last slide has my information. Um, if you have any additional questions, um, please feel free to reach out. And I want to say that Again, you know, understand that this information is for you to use, um, whether it's a hyper-local, small-scale organization, um, or if it's something more aspirational, um, the, the information is still transferable. And even beyond auctions, there is a lot here that is really just about how we should continue or could continue to move forward in the best way as artists and creatives. So with that, I say thank you so much. And I hope that you all have a great rest of your week and good luck with your next submission or participation in the philanthropic art auction. Thank you, Janice. I wanted to share in the chat that I put, a, as you said, a couple of resources, Tala being one of them. They're a friend based in Austin. They come to Houston very often. Definitely check them out as a resource. But also thank you for your time for this workshop. There's a link to a survey in the chat. So. If you could please fill it out, it should take no more than five minutes, if that long. Um, your feedback directly impacts how we present our uh, programming, what program, uh, programming we present, and it allows us to fill in some information in grant reports. Um, we also have some things uh, coming up down the pipeline. Um, some, most of you, I imagine, uh, uh, got uh, knew about uh, this uh, workshop through our um, newsletter but uh if you're if you haven't please subscribe to your newsletter it's in the chat 
but also we have some things coming on, along outside of just workshops. We have presentation night for our artisan program. We have our space taking residency coming up in addition to many other things. So please consider subscribing to our newsletter, following us on social media if you're not already. Um, and with that, we are, I believe, at two o'clock. So thank you all for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.